Good afternoon, hello. My name is Daniel. I'm a triathlete turned gravel pro, I think. This is my Canyon Grizzle, and I, in about 36 hours, I'm doing the Dirty Reaver 200 kilometer gravel ride slash race. So I thought I'd talk you through my bike setup as well as my nutrition strategy for the event. Now, please feel free to yammer away in the comment section down below telling me I need to swap stuff, but it is too late. When this video goes out, this, this race is tomorrow. So I've got what I've got, let's get stuck in. Now, I might look like I'm in Noah's Ark, but this is my back garden, we'll have to just, we'll have to deal with it. So the bike is a Canyon Grizzle CFSL7. It's got the SRAM Rival 1x ETAP Axis group set. Why has everything got a massive name? It's a 40 tooth chain ring and a 1044 rear cassette. A real good range of gears. There's quite a lot of climbing, so I need that really low first gear. So the fact that first gear is lower than a one-to-one -one ratio is really handy. Power meter pedals. I've hacked the um, Xpedo M8 pedals into Favera Asioma power meter pedal bodies. Basically, I can use power to pace and it's a lot better for riding. Drivetrain wise, it's the only sponsored part on this bike. NRG chain supply me with a wax chain and ceramic bearing jockey wheels. There is a code in the description down below. Wax chains are brilliant, especially brilliant off-road. They don't pick up anywhere near as much muck as a normal loop chain, as well as being faster, and as well as this YBN chain being faster than the SRAM chain, this flat top one, so win all round. Wheels are Zip 303S hookless tubeless carbon 40 something mil, 44 mil deep, I can't remember exactly, um, with some Panaracer Gravel King SK Plus tyres. I have just put a new one on the rear because I had a couple of punctures that I didn't want to trust sealing on the day. Um, pressures, I'm running about 35 to 40 psi, I'm quite a big guy so uh, running the high pressure does help me and the going is supposed to be pretty fast on the day so it's supposed to be quite fast rolling so a slightly high pressure will be absolutely fine. Brakes are the standard 160mm rotor, standard pads, and uh, yeah, they seem to stop like on a sixpence, so pretty good. Moving on to the cockpit, we've got some Richley bars which are flared, that's very fashionable, so I hear. 40cm on the hoods and 44s on the drops. And then I thought the clip on bars were really like welcomed in the gravel community. Apparently not, but loads of stick for it. Anyway, uh, being a triathlete, I'm really comfortable in the time trial position. So high sided armrests, uh, extensions on the, on the, on the tops. The high side armrest really hold you in, so when it's bumpy, you can still be in TT position, you don't fall out of them, and I actually feel pretty comfy in that position. With an event so long as this, it's good to have another position. Sometimes you can just get achy and in pain through riding right on the hoods or on the drops, so having another posi position to be able to drop to is really handy. On to other technology and electrical related things. There are a few mandatory items that you have to have on the bike, so one of these is a front and rear light, so I've just got a really like light and you know, flashing rear light that isn't anything special. And the same with the front one, it's about 400 lumens and it lasts a few hours. I'm hoping to not need to use lights on the day, but you never know, do you? So we've got to get to the finish somehow. And then other technology, I'm running the Garmin 1040 solar by computer. That thing will last for days. That'll last far longer than I will. I wanted to get some clicks for the extensions, but SRAM are all sold out and I'm not paying over the odds on eBay, so I'll have to do without those. And I think that is about it in terms of tech. Bottle cages, I've got a left, like a side entry one on the down tube, but a normal one on the seat tube. It was annoying me having a side entry one back there, so I've just gone to a normal one on the back. Bags are the Apajora Canyon official bags, I'm right sucker for those, but they fit really well. Four and a half litres on the frame and a nice big top tube bag. Being a triathlete, I love this sort of thing. This is gonna enable me to carry a bit of clothing and plenty of food. I'll be using this for the majority of the day and just topping up from this bag, but I've also got some tools in the bottom and stuff, so that should be quite useful. The bag behind the saddle is full of things I'm hoping to not need. Tire boot, CO2, uh, multi-tool, tire levers, or chain link, all those sorts of things, chain breaker, things I'm really hoping to not have to go into, but again, you've got to get to the finish, so I'm carrying probably more spares than I would otherwise do but I want to be able to get to the end, so that is the plan. Um, moving on to stuff that's in the bag now, there are a few mandatory things that you have to carry, such as a whistle and what's the other thing? Uh, an, ele uh, an electric blanket, an <laughs> um, emergency blanket. And do you know what? I might well need those, so that's fine. There's some other more standard stuff, such as a tubeless repair kit, a pump, some spare brake pads, these are quite small and light, so I think I might as well carry them, I've got them. I've got a spare mech hanger as well. Multi-tool with a chain, chain link breaker on it. 
and a spare ETAP battery for the rear mech should that die. If you have any questions about the bike or bike setup, let me know in the comment section down below. Let's talk food, my favorite subject. Okay then, I've got a bag full of food. Obviously I won't be carrying it around in a Tesco bag on the day, but just to give you a good idea, I'm carrying about 1,000 grams of carbs, which is about 1.2 kilos of like food and fluid. Quite a lot, but it's quite a long way. I'm gonna start with fluid. So this is a 500 ml soft flask, and a lot of people use these you know, running. These are quite handy because you can empty, let me the hand first, gels into them. Now, none of this is sponsored by the way. I love the OTE super gels. These are quite a lot of carbs per like gram and 40 grams of gel. I can get seven and a half of these in this and opening these seven or eight times and having the wrapper is a pain, especially when I'm trying to keep moving as much as I can. So I will have seven and a half of these in this and I'll be trying my best not to drop this. This will be in my frame bag and I will get it out hopefully frequently and have lots of sips of it. I am anticipating to get sick of some things at some point during the day. So if anything, I've got a little bit too much of everything so that I can dip in and out of things as I see fit. And that's fluid nutrition. I will have two bottles of carb mix on the bike, but not loads of carbs in it. And I'm hoping to pick some more up during the day, but I'd rather not rely on that. I want to have that as, a, as an accessory to all this nutrition I've got. Let's go for some more savory sort of things. Now, I'm gonna carry one tube of Jaffa Cakes and maybe one or two saurine bars. If I'm honest, I don't like love saurine bars. I think they're okay, but during this sort of event, I do like the sweeter things. Jaffa Cakes I do like, but again, they're a bit of a, bit of a faff to eat and they get smashed up and stuff. So I just want to have something different to sweet stuff just in case I really want something that isn't sweet. But again, the aid stations are likely to have things like banana, crisps, sandwiches, those sorts of things. So I'm hoping that if I really want something like that, I can just stop at an aid station. Something that's halfway, it's not quite sweet, not quite savoury, I don't think. Chocolate raisins, these things are absolutely banging. Loads of calories, loads of carbs, really easy to get out. I'm just gonna empty these into my top two bags so I can just put my hand in and snottily and sweatily grab a mouthful. And yeah, chocolate raisins, nice, delicious snack. Some more off the shelf stuff, jelly babies and jelly beans. Now it is forecast quite wet during the day. Jelly beans will get wet and clump together. Jelly babies aren't as bad for that because of the flower coating. I'm sure if it gets really wet, then they will, but hopefully they won't. And again, just two different flavors. Again, loads of carbs. I think it's eight grams of carbs in a jelly baby. That's amazing. So I'm just gonna smash those. Jelly beans as well, nice little treat. Feels like I'm having a treat and getting lots of calories and carbs down me. That's actually it. It's not that complicated, is it? As I say, I'm planning to stop at feed stations if I need and definitely stop for fluid, but that is my nutrition strategy. If you've got any comments, questions or anything, again, this is what I've got, so it ain't changing, but uh, yeah, I'd welcome any thoughts. If you are doing the event and you're watching this video the day before the, the, day before the event, and they said race then, I know it's not a race, Good luck, have a great day. I'm absolutely buzzing to be towing the line at my first gravel event. Can't wait to get stuck in. Hopefully gonna get around the 200K. Hopefully the weather's not, the weather's not gonna be too bad. Whatever distance you're doing, whatever you end up doing, hope you have a great day. If you're watching this in, in later years, I hope it's got loads harder than when I did it. And I'll uh, get subscribed if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock. See you later.